What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of... Forever News! In today's episode, we've got some stories to talk about. Now, for starters, a few days ago, we had the recent passing of a very, very important and prominent member of the Dragon Ball Z production team. Uh, we're definitely going to get into it because I'm sure if you even took a smidge at this person's work, you would be familiar with it. Yeah, it's very unfortunate and it seems like we're losing a lot of legends lately, but we're going to get into this one. We also got a huge huge update on chainsaw man for starters the results for the popularity poll are out alongside how many people participated in the chainsaw man popularity poll mind you there's still no chainsaw man anime for this amount of people to be participating and stuff like that i just want you to keep that in mind but yeah we got that we also got a small update for chainsaw man Two, a little bit more insight into it. So, yeah, we, we've got a lot of Chainsaw Man news. And y'all already know how much I love me, my Chainsaw Man. So, we're going to dive into it. We got an update on the creator of Fairy Tale slash Eden Zero's next project with that video game, Game of Nightmares. We got some visuals. And to be honest with you, Hiro Mashima has always been known for making some really pleasant art. Like, he's a great artist. So, it's looking pretty fire. We're going to take a look. We got the preliminary results for the Black Clover popularity poll. And fam. Black Clover, baby, is going to be kind of surprising to a lot of y'all. I'm sure of it. I think some of the reasons why there's certain placings was because of certain events recently. Like, yeah, we're going to dive into it. But, um, yeah, we got the preliminary results. And it's a little shocking in certain areas. We got some big updates for the Boruto anime, the upcoming episodes. In particular, something that the Boruto anime is making some changes and additions that is for the betterment. Once again, going back, if you see my video a few days ago I made about the Boruto anime, they are making some strides to improve on things that the manga lacked on to be honest with you so we're definitely going to talk about it we got a small comment that i missed out on talking about last time from the creator of bleach on my hero academia's art it was a part of the whole art exhibition and yeah i wanted to include that in this video because yeah kubo's a prominent figure and him participating is big we got a bunch of sales updates for kaiju number eight blue lock and we also have the big sales of you know the recent week and everything where it placed that for all the magazines so we're definitely going to talk about that and the creator Creator of Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, y'all know that recently she won or he or they won the Osama Tezuka Award and there's just a little update on that. So yeah, we got a few stories to talk about. Without further ado, people, let's jump into another exciting episode of Forever News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related and we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it! For no matter how you know. Okay, people, so we got to talk about it. It was a few days ago now that the prominent member of the Dragon Ball Z um, production staff, the composer, the music composer in particular, recently passed away. Very, very sad, shocking. A lot of us just, it, it took us by surprise. But yeah, let's take a look. Dragon Ball Z music score composer passes away. Shunsuke Kikuchi, the music composer behind the iconic Dragon Ball Z anime, has passed away at the age of 89 during treatment of aspiration pneumonia. Kikuchi composed music for several anime from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z to Dr. Slump, Doraemon, and much more. And this man was a legend. People will not forget this man. For starters, I mean, alone, Dragon Ball Z is worldwide one of the biggest anime and probably will always be one of the biggest anime of all time. You go anywhere in the world, they will at the very least know of Dragon Ball Z. And... Yeah, it's very, very unfortunate. So definitely um, my prayers and condolences out to his family. Everybody send best wishes to his family. Um, at, at the very least, he lived a pretty lengthy life, though, you know, almost 90 years old. And it's just really a shame that recently we're losing a lot of legends. Like, yo, we've been talking and regardless of they're all over the world and stuff like that. We just lost DMX, a music legend. Now we're losing, you know, Shunsuke Kikuchi, the composer of Dragon Ball Z. Like, it just, I don't know. It's very, very sad. I guess that's the word I'm going to use. And uh, yeah, again, prayers and condolences out to his family. Um, you will never be forgotten. Okay, people, next up, we got some huge news. The results for the Chainsaw Man popularity poll is out. But also, it was a major turnout, which showcases just how insanely huge the Chainsaw Man popularity is. Like, people really, the fandom is insanely huge. And remember, we still don't have an anime. We're getting an anime. We're getting one from, you know, one of the biggest studios out right now that everybody can't stop talking about map of studios but we don't got an anime right now before we get to the results of the poll let's take a look at 
just some of the information about how huge the turnout was. Because according to Crunchyroll, it says, Chainsaw Man's second character popularity poll has over 620,000 people choosing their favorite characters. Tatsuki Fujimoto's Chainsaw Man manga series is something special, connecting with fans all over the world in a way only Chainsaw Man can. 620,000 fans voted, and yesterday, the Weekly Shonen Jump website announced the results of the poll, informing Chainsaw Man fans all around the world who is officially the best character in the series or most popular. So for starters, over 600,000 votes. Insane. Love to see it. But let's take a look. Okay, people. So coming in at number 10, Kobeni. I expected Kobeni to be top 5. I'm kind of shocked uh, she only made it 10. Still, shout outs to her. That's really dope to make it to begin with in the top 10 or whatnot. But yeah, I expected Kobeni to be a little higher. Just being honest. Coming in at number 9, a character that I thought would have been lower than Kobeni or not even on this list, Pochita. Like, <laughs> considering Pochita has not been prevalent in the last, I don't know how many chapters of the manga, at the very least, like a central piece, I'm shocked that he made top 10. Number 8, a character that... Yeah, it's been a while, um, Himeno, and I'm trying not to give any spoilers about any of these characters, just mind you, but, uh, Himeno, number eight, big shout outs to Himeno, love that character, like, so far, these three characters, I love them, uh, all three of them, uh, number seven, Angel, really awesome character, number six, Hirokazu Arai, uh, number five, Reze, yeah, that, that's about right again, Reze in the top five, baby, number four, Denji, three, Power to Makima one Aki. Now, honestly, like it's crazy the MC not even being in the top three. Denji only at number four. Reze perfectly placed. Honestly, if it was up to me, I would have put Power number one, Makima number two, Denji number three. Like I would not have had Aki at number one. Don't get me wrong, Aki awesome character. Everybody in Chainsaw Man is awesome. Like it's just that damn good. These characters are all awesome. But Aki number one shocked the shit out of me, and Aki beat everybody with eighty eight thousand five hundred votes absolutely insane shout outs to all these characters shout outs to chainsaw man um i just can't freaking wait for chainsaw man 2 and while we're talking about that we got a little bit of updates on chainsaw man 2 from a recent interview from tatsuki fujimoto because according to this it says in the second part of tatsuki fujimoto and yuji kaku's interview fujimoto reveals that the idea for chainsaw man's second part has already been decided the serialization is scheduled to follow the original series with a 12th volume so basically chainsaw man will just continue uh since it will be a completely different story the title may change to Chainsaw Man Season 2, even though this is all still undecided, along with how the logo and covers will be designed, because, you know, there's been a little bit of logo controversy out, outside of Japan. Uh, still, Fujimoto was told that he was free to draw and write no matter what the result is. Kaku praises Fujimoto's freedom when it comes to serialization, even though Fujimoto himself wondered if he was going to be able to publish something like that and jump, being a bit hesitant about it. And Chainsaw Man Part 2 is still scheduled to be published in the Shonen Jump Plus app. The biggest thing to take away from all of this is is the fact that the serialization is scheduled to follow the original series with a 12th volume that means that we're just going to go straight through it could be titled chainsaw man season 2 or whatever but it's going to just continue on as the 12th volume of the series which how much longer fam i want it i want it real bad like yo especially when the anime comes it's going to be a storm like you want this to have a volume or two already out by the time that anime comes out if you want to make some money Tatsuki fujimoto like Food for thought, fam, especially I'm imagining if we're doing a Chainsaw Man 2, the contract's got to be renewed. You, the ball is in your court right now. You can really finesse Shonen Jump and Shueisha for some big bucks. Let's do it. Like, now. Come on. <laughs> but overall, just Chainsaw Man greatness. Shout outs to it. If you haven't read it, go read it. Uh, when the anime comes out, watch it. It's, it's good. Okay, people, moving forward, the creator of Fairy Tale and Eden's Zero's next big project. As some of you may know, he's working with Square Enix to create a new RPG video game for the iOS and Android. And uh, yeah, let's just quickly read. Hiro Mashima and Square Enix Gate of Nightmares game shares first screens. A collaboration between Fairy Tale creator Hiro Mashima and Square Enix was recently revealed with mobile fantasy RPG game of Nightmares currently in the works for iOS and Android platforms. The initial announcement was paired with a trailer holy cow like the art actually looks really dope especially the mc he looks really awesome he kind of looks more like the character from raid master in my opinion but the graphics look pretty cool and just in general the art style shout outs to hiro mashima fam like he really inspires me all jokes aside like yo this looks dope and everything but he really inspires the creative in me and the hustler in me to keep on moving forward to keep on working on shit work on the Feneva news website work on the next video the next idea upgrade my camera like i I'm constantly on my grind, and when I hear Hiromashima is doing something else, that makes me go 10 times harder. Like, 
big, big, big shout outs to Hiro Mashima. I, I can't stress enough. That man knows how to hustle. Okay, people. Next up, we got the preliminary results for the Black Clover popularity poll worldwide from Japan from Weekly Shonen Jump. And uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of looking interesting. It says right here, interim announcement for the fifth Mage general election. The current top 15 places are these characters. The editor in charge is also in an unexpected ranking, which is very bizarre. But uh, 15, Mimosa, okay. 14, Ghosh. I wouldn't put Ghosh in my 15, to be honest with you. But hey, that's just me. 13, Mario Leona. Okay, I, I, I wouldn't mind her being top 10, but okay. Number 12, I can't remember Shorty's name. I want to say she was from the underwater sea dungeon shit. Uh, number 11, Nero. Shout outs to Nero. I, I'd put her in, like, number 10 is if I'm not mistaken that's the character that's based on the band member if I'm not mistaken the person that does like some of the music for Black Clover and I think like his fans have been really going hard to try make him win so it's very interesting but uh yeah yo you got your fans doing this shit cause man there's no way you would have beat out Mimosa, Nero, Mario, Leona but alright alright number 9 Luck Number eight, you know, that's big. You know, not being in top five, that is very, very big. Number seven, Lieb. I expected Lieb to be top five as well. Number six, Dante. That is very telling. Dante in number six in the top 10 at that. Number five, Charlotte. So fans are still really hype off that Charlotte. Fans are still like on that Charlotte wave. Number four, I thought he'd be like number one or two, but number four, Yami. Number three, Noel. And right here, I'm not even gonna lie. Like this is not bad, but I'm shocked. Number two, knocked. Knocked at number two, fam. Like, what? And number one, Asta. And again, these are preliminary, so things can change. But wow, just absolutely wow. I'm I'm kind of shocked at a lot of this. Like, okay, like, you know, the band member's doing his thing, whatevs. I get it. Lieb not being top five. Yuno being only eight. Dante being six. Like, your thoughts on this? <laughs> I'm baffled. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I, I know I keep saying it, but I'm genuinely just shocked. Like, what? But... We'll see when the final results come in if it stays the same. I'm imagining Asa is going to stay number one. I don't know if number two is going to remain the same. Like number two and number three. Like Noel over Yami? Like fam, y'all simping hard as hell. Okay, people, moving forward, we got some big updates for the Boruto anime. And the Boruto anime is making some additions and changes in general. That is so much for the betterment that I love to see. Because we got the episode titles and a little bit of synopsis for episodes 199 through like 202, if I'm not mistaken. And one of those episodes in particular particular is showcasing something that I said needed to happen and they're doing it so Studio Pero is very aware of the things that the manga did not include did not give context to none of that stuff and they're working on changing it let's read because for starters we got episode 199 it's called Overload and it'll air May 16th and all of these synopses are courtesy of Organic Dinosaur over on Twitter shout out to Organic Dinosaur it says in order to win against Naruto in combat Delta one of the leaders of the mysterious organization Kara utilizes a cowardly method and and treats Kawaki as if he were an object. That made Naruto erupt into a rage. Oh my god, I can't wait. He isn't afraid of Delta's destructive light beam, one that obliterates biological cells, which then can't be recovered via any regenerative abilities, and tries to drown her out with an overbearing massive Rasengan. He keeps trying to cram her with strong jutsu. However, Delta has been reconstructed with scientific ninja tools. The size of the jutsu is irrelevant. No matter what, it seems as if her abilities can absorb his jutsu. Then number 200, becoming an apprentice and that'll be out May 23rd and it'll have some content from chapter 34. Uh, since Kawaki lost an arm in his battle with Delta, he got to receive a prosthetic arm that were originally made for Naruto's use. Essentially, the prosthetic wouldn't work without being powered by chakra from Naruto himself. However, Naruto personally distributed his own chakra to the prosthetic so that Kawaki could use it in a similar manner. Naruto tells Kawaki about bonds. Chakra is a power that connects us to one another and it's something that exists inside all of us. As Kawaki remembers those words, he asked Naruto about getting some ninjutsu training. Very, very dope stuff there. Meanwhile, Delta's report has arrived. The leader of Kara, Jigen, has now become aware that Boruto's palm has been etched with karma too. He seems to smile with satisfaction at this development. And that was episode 200. Next up, episode 201, Empty Tears. That's scheduled for May 30th. Uh, it says... Nearby a sleeping Naruto, Kawaki is repairing the broken flower vase. Then the nine-tailed beast Kurama appears in front of him. That sounds so freaking hype. Let's go, baby. Having been sealed inside Naruto, Kurama has been living together with him up until now, too. Kurama tells Kawaki that he resembles what Naruto was like in his former days. Kawaki unexpectedly hears about half of Naruto's lifetime and then starts to think that he also wants to be like him someday. Moreover, he could cooperate with Boruto, someone who has been etched with the same karma as him. Kawaki makes a decision once again to defeat the 
ringleader of everything Jigen, as well as Quara alongside Boruto. And then lastly, the reason why I decided to report on all this to begin with, episode 202, A Religious Organization. The director of the Ambu Sai became worried over some acquired intel based on the data that has been brought back by Sarutobi Konohamaru. Hey, Konohamaru's doing something from the airship crashing incident. And so, Sai requested for Sasuke to handle it and utilize his time space ninjutsu to pay a visit to the site. There were many enigmatic shapes that were depicted in that particular dimension. Sasuke thought that many aspects of what he was seeing there could be connected to the Otsutsuki clan. In the meantime, someone was using some amazing powers. A sick person had been saved by one of the leaders of Kara. Boro right in front of everyone's eyes facing the people who had been gathered around him Boro preached that he would find a way to make everyone happy and this is something that I've said from the manga they needed to do I just said it not even that long ago again and they're doing it so Studio Pero big shout outs to everything that they're doing right now they have really turned everything around for the Boruto anime and it's, it's smooth sailing. Just shout outs to the Boruto anime and Studio Pero. And I know Pero's going to be animating a few of these episodes. I think 199 in particular they'll be handling if I'm not mistaken. So big ups. Next up we got the comment from the creator of Bleach, Taite Kubo, regarding My Hero Academia. He said, if real life heroes did exist, how exactly would society perceive them? Horikoshi is able to perfectly match a flashy style, but at the same time also expressing a delicate sense of realism within his work. That, coupled with the theme mentioned above, is what makes Boku no Hero Academia so amazing. Congratulations on the Boku no Hero Academia exhibition. Kubo is a very artistic guy. He loves art. He is very passionate about art. So you know he means these things. Like, cause Kubo, he'll, he'll say some shit. He ain't, he ain't scared. So big ups to Kubo. Awesome stuff. Quick update on Koyo Harugo Toge, the creator of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. Because Kimetsu no Yaiba won the Osamu Tezuka's 25th Manga Award. And to thank them for it, she drew a picture of Tanjiro. And it says here, Kimetsu no Yaiba special illustration by Koyoharu Gotoge thanking for receiving Osamu Tezuka's 25th Manga Award Special Award. And yeah, it's just really dope. Like, big shout outs. They've been talking about this for a while. They must really make this like a big event. Demon Slayer deserves it though. Like, how many freaking sales it broke? How many records? All sorts of shit. Like, Koyoharu Gotoge deserves her flowers or his flowers, their flowers. And since we're talking about sales, we got a ton of them for starters. Blue Lock has 4 million copies in circulation. That shit is becoming a monster. That's going to be a big one. So look out for that. I, I want to say, is it a soccer anime I, I i think it's soccer don't quote me on that i know it's sports but i'm not exactly sure which sport that is got an update for kaiju number eight it says kaiju number eight volume one is already on its sixth print meaning the volume has been reprinted five times it also has 900,000 copies in circulation and physical and digital i want to say they reported that it was already at a million so that kind of threw me off right there but reprinted five times People are buying their kaiju number eight. And then we also got the sales for the recent week, the top sales, the top manga. And looking at the top 30, 30 through 21, a good chunk of those are Jujutsu Kaisen. Like aside from two, from 30 to 21, only 30 and 21 are not Jujutsu Kaisen. Everything else is Jujutsu Kaisen. Big shout outs there. Then from number 20 to 11, uh, that's a little bit different. There's, like, I think, two Jujutsu Kaisen volumes, um, Four Nights of the Apocalypse volume one. Oh, that's dope. So we got sales for that. Uh, in its second week, if I'm not mistaken, it's at 81,000. That's not too bad. So we're almost at 100,000, and that's volume one. So the Seven Deadly Sins sequel is almost at 100,000 in two weeks. That's pretty freaking good. Very, very good there, actually. My Hero, and it's, I want to say this is its fourth week, uh, 572,000. Jujutsu Kaisen, I want to say it's been about a month as well, a 1.9, so almost 2 million. Really dope. And then in the top 10, I've heard of this anime, Ari Fureta. Uh, I, I can't even say the rest of that name. Coming in at number 10 with its first week, 48,000. Okay, Fire Force 28. I want to say it's been 10 days on sale and 115,000. Big shout outs to Fire Force. That's what? Basically less than two weeks and it's already at 100,000. Really awesome stuff there. Uh, moving up, number three, Tokyo Revengers in 10 days, 140,000. Yeah, that anime is doing wonders. In fact, as of the recording of this video, it's Saturday. I cannot wait to watch the next episode. I keep on holding off from reading the manga but I don't know how much longer I could do it. I really, really am interested and really into this shit. And then the top two spots coming in at number two, Detective Conan in 12 days at 373,000. Still a Goliath. And number one, fam, number one in seven days, half a million copies. Kingdom, 501,000. Like what? I can't even believe that right now. Seven days, Kingdom 61, 500. Oh my God. Big, big shout outs to Kingdom just in general. Wow. Again, no anime that people care about and doing those numbers. <laughs> Clap it up. 
huge. And yeah, people, that's the sales that we have, and uh, that's the stories we have for today's video. I'm curious what you guys think. Dragon Ball Z composer passing away. Again, condolences and prayers. Uh, Chainsaw Man popularity poll results alongside the update on Chainsaw Man 2. I still can't believe that number one, Aki. Wow. Uh, Hiro Mashima's new game, Game of Nightmares. That looks pretty freaking dope. Uh, the preliminary results for the Black Clover popularity poll. I'm still kind of shocked and baffled. Uh, the Boruto anime's changes and additions that they're making. Again, it just sounds so freaking good. Uh, Demon Slayer Award. Kaiju number 8 reprints. Really dope stuff there. Uh, Taite Kubo, creator of Bleach with his comments on My Hero. For an artist that appreciates art to compliment like that, that's huge. The recent sales for the manga and stuff like that, like Kingdom, a monster. Kingdom. Wow. <laughs> and uh, your thoughts on any of the stories we covered in today's episode. But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit that bell to get all notifications. And if you want to follow any of my other social media, links, of course, in the description below. I'm from the world. And as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga for life. Bye. Have an awesome day. Peace in. And you guys just watched another episode of Born Ever New. Have an awesome day. <laughs>